Throughout these four Sundays of Advent, we are introduced each Sunday to persons out of our history who have been particularly important in what they have said or done to the development of our faith, to who we are today. From the Old Testament, we've heard from Jeremiah, Isaiah, Baruch, and today the prophet Micah. Micah, a prophet, a contemporary of Isaiah, who prophesied God's word in the lowlands of Judah, in the pasture land between the Mediterranean Sea and the mountains interior. Micah, his book is only about seven chapters long in the Old Testament, but what he says today and what he prophesies in this passage today is truly important to who we are as Christians and to who we believe Jesus to be. Micah, prophesying to the people of Judah, tells them that God is going to send them a king who is shepherd, who is faithful to God's word, who is servant. Not the type of king that they would ordinarily expect, certainly not the king of their history, but a king who will be quite different from what they have come to believe is normal. He will pasture the people of Israel, shepherding them into one flock, a flock that is faithful and united and devoted to God and to God's will. He will serve them as Jesus at the Last Supper wrapped the towel around his waist and went to each one of the apostles to wash their feet. He will be faithful to the will of God as we celebrate in Holy Week his giving up his own will to accept his crucifixion, his death, and ultimately his resurrection. If we reread this passage, or if someone re proclaims it to us again and we close our eyes as we listen, the image of Jesus appears in our mind's eye because we truly do believe that Jesus is the fulfillment of this prophecy of Micah. When we get to the Gospel passage for today, St. Luke is telling us family stories. Not his family, but the family of Jesus. These two mothers-to-be meet in the doorway, and they begin to discuss all that God has done in their lives. The scriptures tell us that Mary, in haste, after having been visited by Gabriel, goes to the hill country of Judah, to the small town where Zechariah and Elizabeth live. She can't wait in her excitement and in her youth and in her innocence to let Elizabeth know what God has done in Mary's life. Elizabeth, certainly older, wiser, is filled with some of that same excitement because God is working miracles in her life as well. And so these two mothers-to-be meeting in the doorway of the house and giving thanks and praise and glory to God for the grace, God's presence, 
that has come to them. In the womb of Elizabeth, John the Baptist, hearing Mary's greeting, leaps. Reality is, the translation from Greek would be better if it said, he danced in Elizabeth's womb. He begins the proclamation and the prophecy for which he is known forever. As a child in the womb of his mother, prophesying and welcoming into the world the light and the mercy that God sends in the person of the baby who is Jesus, who is the Christ. Mary, so young, so innocent, so un, really unaware, filled with the mystery of God. And Elizabeth, the wiser, more experienced, older woman, the wife of the priest Zechariah. And she, filled with the Holy Spirit, reveals mysteries from of old. How blessed am I that the mother of my Lord would come to visit. These are things she could not know. They are revealed to her by the Holy Spirit in that moment. And notice, if you will, that her words become a prayer that we as Catholics have prayed for over 2,000 years. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. There's an old Jewish proverb that states, God cannot be everywhere, so he created mothers. And certainly in the Gospel passage from Luke today, it is mother who brings God into the world, Jesus, the Son of God. It is mother who brings the prophet into the world who will usher in and announce the presence of the Son of God when he comes. The reading that is perhaps a little bit mysterious is the reading to the Hebrews, the letter to the Hebrews. Because this reading is a bit philosophical, it's a bit esoteric, it doesn't seem to quite fit the first and second reading, the first reading in the Gospel for today. But listen to what the author of the letter of he to the Hebrews has to say, and how does that fit into our lives these days? <clears throat> Brothers and sisters, when Christ came into the world, he said, sacrifice and offering you did not desire. Having been a priest for 25 years, I can tell you that we as Catholics don't agree with that. We as Catholics want to constantly find ourselves on the wrong side of the law. We as Catholics are always trying to find something wrong with what we're doing so that we can punish ourselves and bleed. Good old Catholic guilt. But listen again. Sacrifice and offering you did not desire. What the author of Hebrews, when Christ came into the world, he said, all of this stuff from the Old Testament is Old Testament. And these times are now new. God has entered the world in a way that God has never entered the world previously. 
And so the old law is set aside. That old way of thinking and that old way of living no longer serves us any purpose. And yes, as Catholics, we accept penance and we do it joyfully. But we don't go around looking for opportunities to beat ourselves up. And neither do we look for opportunities to beat up other people. Unless, of course, they're unaccompanied minors from south of the border or Syrians looking for a place to live. Sacrifice and offering you did not desire. And Christ, in this reading, goes on to say, but a body you prepared for me. God, in the person of the Son, a human being like all of us, except in the area of sin, came to live among his people, came to demonstrate God's love and mercy and justice, came to be one of us, so that in the process we could be one with God. If we go back to what the author of the Hebrew, the letter to the Hebrews has stated, God came into the world incarnate, in flesh, so that we could know God, so that we could love God, so that we could serve God. Now, those of you who are my age or older, there aren't very many of us, will recall that that was probably the third or fourth question of the Baltimore Catechism. Why did God make you? To know Him, to love Him, to serve Him. It's still true. It is why we are here. And in knowing, loving, and serving God, we make Him present today and available to everyone else. We are the image of Jesus Christ. We are the body of Christ. And our mission is still the same. To, love, to know, love, and serve God, and in so doing, to make God known in our world. What the Scriptures have done today is to let us know that in the ordinary events of our lives, God is ever-present. And as we meet in the doorway, at the gate, as we meet at the grocery store, or in school, or at the office, our life and our ministry is to make God known, to love Him, and to serve him in all those around us. It is in doing these things that we prepare ourselves to celebrate this Christmas with the great joy and peace that God has sent. The letter to the Hebrews 
makes it very clear. God came into the world for communion with humanity. And God's will for humanity is communion. May we truly be one with one another here within the community, with one another throughout the world, with God who has given us all these blessings that we will discuss at the doorway with our neighbors. May we be filled with the peace and the mercy that is God's justice.